What a mighty God we serve. Oh, what a mighty God we serve. Well, angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God. Oh, let's sing that again. Well, what a mighty God we serve. Oh, what a mighty God we serve. Well, angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God. Oh, Jesus is the God. Well, Jesus is the God we serve. Well, Jesus is the God we serve. Heaven and earth adore him. Jesus is the God. What a mighty God now. Well, what a mighty God we serve. Well, what a mighty God we serve. Angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God we serve. Amen. What a mighty God. Will have the preeminence that you desire in my life. Oh, in my life. Will, yes, have the preeminence that you desire in my life. In my life. We'll work with our hands, oh, speak with our lips, see with our eyes, and walk with our feet, oh, have the preeminence that you desire in our lives. That you desire in our life, in our life, we'll have the preeminence that you desire in our life, in our life, we'll work with our our legs, oh, see with our eyes, and walk with our feet, oh, have the preeminence that you desire in our life, in our life, well, yes, work with our hands. Speak with our lips, oh, see with our eyes, and walk with our feet. Have the preeminence that you desire in our life, in our life. We worship you. In spirit and in truth, we worship in spirit and in truth. We have heard your word and felt your breath. 
this your prayer this evening. We want to see prayer but before we do I want us to as we're standing as a congregation I'd like for us to remember sister Donna Howard and the trial that she's in now her father is still missing he's an elderly man he has dementia and some other health issues and they don't know what's happened they don't know where he's at he came up missing Monday evening he drove his car they did find the car yesterday up here in Mercer County, up near St. Mary's Lake. They have no idea why he drove there, for what reason. They've had no communication. They found the, the car in a ditch and the doors were locked, but they don't know. So you can only imagine what it would be like if it was your family, what our sister Donna's going through. I talked to her last night and again today, and she's trusting the Lord to take care of her dad. And I just want to agree with her and pray that God will help him to be found and and help the family and comfort them in this terrible trial. So let's bow our heads together and let's pray together as an assembly. Oh, dear Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, when there's no place for us to turn, God, we're so thankful that we're not left without a help in this world. But God, you are the strong tower that the righteous run into and are safe. You're the one that we turn to for every need because you've already provided for us. And God, we know that you're mindful, Lord, of each one of us, and you're mindful of the things that we go through. And Lord, this situation for the Sister Donna and her family, Lord, it's such a difficult situation. It's so worrying, Lord. They don't know where Donna's father is, Lord, but you know where he is. And God, our Sister Donna, she declared to me today she's believing and trusting in you. And God, I pray that you would bless her, Lord, and that you would let her father be found. Pray that you bless those that are searching, that you would give wisdom to those that are looking. And God, that you would do something, Lord, to let him be found. Pray that you bless Sister Donna and her family, her brothers, the rest of the family. Comfort them, Lord, and especially our sister, that you would comfort her. Bring peace into her heart and faith. And help her to stand fast, knowing that all things are in control. And that you have her in the palm of your hand, and you have everything that... That, that she cares for, Lord, that you care for also. And I pray, Lord, that you would help in this time of need. Bless us to be a comfort to her, Lord, 
to, to continue to uphold her in our prayer, Lord, and to comfort her and encourage her. I pray, Lord, that you would show yourself mighty in this situation. Lord, as we look into your word tonight and as we listen to the message that you gave us, Lord, I pray that you would just open our hearts to receive the truth for this hour that we walk in, that our eyes will be open, Lord, and that we will live the life that you've called us to live and that we'll have a tremendous faith knowing what hour we're in and who we are. That as we walk through this life, Lord, there's trials all about, but God, you know all about it. You've prepared the way and you've showed us so in your word. And I pray, God, that you would just give revelation upon revelation to us, Lord. Help us, God, to walk in this life as you would walk in this life. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. God bless you. You can have your seats for a minute. Thank you, musicians. I appreciate it. Uh, we're going into the second part of our tape service tonight, part two. Of there is a man here that can turn on the light. We started last Wednesday. We have part two, and we'll have one more, I believe, one more. Wednesday, which will be next Wednesday. If we could take our books out, uh, if you have your book in paper form, electronic form, however, and I want to just do a, uh, just a real quick review, and then we'll go into our questions, then we'll read the opening scripture so we don't lose sight of that, and then we'll play the tape. Uh, we started from the beginning last time, and we made it to page 14 last Wednesday, and I, I'm not going to go through all the questions, but I just want to uh, go through a couple of them to refresh us of where we are in the message. The first question I asked was, what is the subject that Brother Branham is going to speak on? So we can find that in paragraph 34. The answer to that is paragraph 34 on page 7. Page 7, paragraph 34. He says, may the Lord add his blessing to the reading of his word. And now, odd little text that I heard someone speak said this, but I want to take this for a text. There is a man here that can turn on the light. And now we're going to speak on the subject of light. So the text is there's a man here who can turn on the light, but his subject is light. And we heard that as we were going through, and we'll hear much about that tonight, that Brother Benham is talking about light. Uh, question number three was, how does light come? We can find the answer to that in paragraph 59 on page 11. We looked in other places, but I just want to pull out one sentence here. Paragraph 59 now remember, then, light comes by the spoken word of God. So the light comes by the spoken word of God. And then the last question was, life comes by what? So now, how does light come? By the spoken word of God. Life comes by what? Let's go to paragraph 74 on page 13. Paragraph 74 on page 13. So life is only by the word of God made manifest. So the light comes by the spoken word, and life comes by that word made manifest. Amen. So you can see the pattern of Brother Benham's thinking. So life is only by the word of God made manifest. Life comes only by the word of God made manifest. As long as it's just in the book like this, it still can be questioned. But when it's made manifest and you see the product of what it spoke of being manifested, then that is light on the word. That's what... That's what uh, the, that's what brings the word said so and then it comes to pass that is life and light light bringing life light brings life let's go over to page 80 on the next page page 14 paragraph 80 let's read that God's word comes only by the Bible God's Bible is the printed form of the Son of God because the Bible said that it is the revelation of Jesus Christ. It's God revealing himself through Christ, and Christ is the word. And it takes the light of God to shine upon that word, to vindicate it, to prove that God still speaks life, eternal life. He speaks natural light, brings life. Life only comes by the light, the word made manifest, or made flesh. Amen. And that's what brings life. So it's important that we're where the where the word is made flesh. Amen. I want to get into the questions. If we can bring the PowerPoint up, Brother Franco. We'll have some questions uh, today for part two. Question number one is, what guides you to the light? What guides you to the light? If you'll notice, sometimes the questions are worded a little bit funny, but they're worded in the way Brother Bam's going to speak it so we can... Catch the context, catch it and pull it out of the, the text. What guides you to the light? Question number two, 
Why did mankind need to learn how to split an atom? I like this one. This one is very, very interesting. Why did mankind need to learn how to split an atom? It's amazing what, what God has showed us through this prophetic gift in this day. It is absolutely amazing. Why did mankind need to learn how to split an atom? The scientists just thought they were smart. They didn't realize God allowed it for a purpose. Number three, why did they reject the Messiah? And like I said before, there's all kinds of answers to the question. If it's a standalone question, we can come up with all kinds of things. But I'm looking for the answer that he's giving through this message where we're staying in, in the context of this message here. Why did they reject the Messiah? Question number four, what is light? This is very similar to what we asked last time, but there's a statement that he makes that I want to highlight. What is light? What is light? And number five, we cannot live by what kind of light? That's an odd phrase question, but you'll find out why. We cannot live by what kind of light? So there's a certain kind of light we can't live by. So we cannot live by what kind of light? And we'll find that the prophet answers this question for us. We cannot live by what kind of light? Okay, so we are going to begin on page 14, right at the beginning of paragraph 79. It's just a little, just one paragraph before where we stopped last time. <coughs> so we'll begin on page 14, paragraph 79, and we'll go all the way to page 33, and we'll go to the bottom of paragraph uh, 180. So we'll go to page, page 33, bottom of paragraph 180. So hopefully you got those questions wrote down. Let's just stand together quickly and we'll go through the opening scriptures because as we go through the sermons, I don't want to lose context of the scriptures that Brother Renham opens with. It's something that I've always have a habit of referring back to. And so Isaiah chapter 42, verse 1, will be the first reading. Isaiah chapter 42 and verse 1. Isaiah 42, verse 1, Behold, my servant whom I uphold, mine elect, in whom my soul delighteth. I have put my spirit upon him. He shall bring forth judgment to the Gentiles. He shall not cry, nor lift up, nor cause his voice to be heard in the street. A bruised reed shall he not break, and the smoking flax shall he not quench. He shall bring forth judgment unto truth. He shall not fail, nor be discouraged, till he have set judgment in the earth, and the isles shall wait for his law. Thus saith God the Lord, he that created the heavens and stretched them out, he that spreadeth forth the earth and that which cometh out of it, he that giveth breath unto the people upon it and spirit to them that walk therein. I, the Lord, have called thee in righteousness and I will uphold thee. And I'm sorry, and I will hold thine hand and I will keep thee and give thee for a covenant of the people, for a light of the Gentiles, to open the blind eyes, to bring out the prisoners from the prison and them that sit in darkness out of the prison house. Let's turn to Matthew chapter 4. Matthew chapter 4. And we'll begin reading from verse 12. Matthew chapter 4 and verse 12. Now when Jesus had heard that John was cast into prison, he departed into Galilee and leaving Nazareth, he came and dwelt in Capernaum, which is upon the seacoast, in the borders of Zebulon and Nephthalim, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, The land of Zebulun and the land of Nephthalim, by the way of the sea beyond Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles, the people which sat in darkness saw great light, and to them which sat in the region in shadow of death, light is sprung up. From that time, Jesus began to preach and to say, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Amen. You can have your seats. We'll turn to page 14, and we'll begin at the top of paragraph 
79. Brother Franco, if you could turn that on for us. Sometimes that little grain lays in the earth dormant all through the uh, winter, uh, like seed, uh, winter wheat, sowed in the ground. But when that sun gets just right, oh, it's got to live. Amen. Yeah. See? And it can't live without the sun. Right. And God's made promises for every age and every day. And when the light gets right and shines upon that, it'll produce just exactly what the Word said, because Amen. He is the light and the light. God's Word comes only by the Bible. God's Bible is the, the printed form of the Son of God because the Bible said that it is the revelation of Jesus Christ. Amen. It's God revealing Himself through Christ, and Christ is the Word. And it takes the light of God to shine upon that word, to vindicate it, to prove that God still speaks life, eternal life. Amen. He speaks uh, natural life, brings the life. Life only comes by the light. The word made manifest or made flesh. When all the promises become uh, in the Bible, become manifest is when Jesus Christ, the word, was made flesh among us. God always works through man. Man is God's subject. Now, if it gets a little warm in here for you, you pull the windows down or whatever you wish to, cut the furnace down, maybe the janitor cut the furnace down a little. See, many are warm, and it's warm standing here too. <laughs> so uh, remember that uh, I'm glad it's warm instead of cold. Cold, I, I like warm. I, warm always brings light. Life. <laughs> Takes fire. <laughs> Notice, now made flesh. When the Word becomes flesh, it becomes manifested. Like, take the Word and put it in the right position, the right kind of ground, it'll bring forth, the, the seed will bring forth its kind. And the Word brought into the right kind of a heart, it'll manifest itself. It'll bring forth the light, it'll break forth upon it. All right, nothing natural. Uh, nothing uh, natural or spiritual can live without God's light. Amen. Life can only come then by light. Amen. Nothing natural or nothing spiritual can live without God's light. Amen. Think of that. All right. But when He sends us the light and does all these things and then we reject it. Now that's the pitiful part. Yes. It's when light is rejected. When it's sent to us. Now could you imagine some man today saying, I just refuse to say there's such a thing as a sun. I don't believe there is a sun. And he runs down into the basement and, and shuts all the doors and sets back in the darkness and said there is no such a thing as sun. There is no such a thing as light. You know right away there was something mentally wrong with that person. See? There's something wrong when he runs back into a dark basement and refuses to accept the benefit of God-given life. There's something wrong with him. He don't want his warm rays. He doesn't want his health-giving uh, substance. He doesn't want his light to walk in. He had rather set in darkness. It shows mentally something wrong, natural with the man. And I say this with all love and respect. So is there something spiritually wrong with a man that will run back into his denominations of creed and refuse to see Bible light when it's shining right before him? There's something wrong with him. Hallelujah. Goes back into his creeds and forms and shuts the door and says there is no such a thing as that. The days of miracles is past. There's no such a thing as divine healing. There are none of these things. That was for an apostle. The man is spiritually crazy. Yeah. Yeah. There's something wrong with him. He, he, he's pulled down the curtains and rejected the Holy Spirit that can come upon him if he can. If ye abide me and my words in you, then the light shining upon this word, ask what you will. Oh, yeah. See? See? There's something wrong. That he would reject the God-given sources that God has given to us to live by His Word. The just shall live by faith. 
And man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word. Not part of the word, every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. And when a man will just refuse that, there's something wrong with that person. Something wrong with his experience. That he claims to love God and then refuses God. There's something gone wrong with the person. We know that without a shadow of doubt. He rejects it. Runs into his place and says, I just I don't want to know nothing about it. Don't tell me nothing about these things. I, I don't believe nothing about it. You don't matter what you say. The fellow said not long ago I was telling you about. He said, I don't care if you would bring 50 cancers and bring 50 doctors to testify. Them. I don't believe. I don't care if you would raise up the dead right before me. I wouldn't believe it. See? There's something wrong with that person. Amen. There, there, there's, uh, and yet the man was a minister. See? See? Supposed to be a minister. But just because that organization doesn't believe in, in the uh, uh, powers of God, don't believe that the word uh, meant just what it said, the man runs into this basement, old, musty, dirty, filthy basement of an organization and refuses the warmth and life-giving rays of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Jesus Christ, which is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. Man, there's something wrong with that person. He would rather live in that must, darkness, and so forth, than to live in the light of the God and of the Bible that said that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. The works that I do shall you do also. Even greater than this shall you do. For I go to my Father. There's something wrong with that person. Without a question at all. There's something wrong. And to you man. Let's listen to this across the world. Wherever you may be. There's something wrong with your experience. When you say that you love God and refuse His Word. There's something you refuse a very... No wonder the things can, the church is in its condition and things cannot be done as God promised is because you won't even receive the word or walk in the light. Amen. The Bible said, let us walk in the light as He is in the light. Amen. Then the blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son, cleanses us from all sin. Sin is unbelief. Then if we are walking in the God-given light of the hour, then God takes that word that's given for the hour and vindicates it just like he did in Genesis 1-3. He said, let there be light and light come forth. His word went forth and light followed it and cleared away the mist and the darkness went to one corner and the light shined on the other side. That's the way God does today. He sends his word for this hour. And the Holy Spirit comes and makes that word live. And the darkness goes on to the creeds and denominations, but light shines because it's a word of God being vindicated. That His word is true. Hallelujah. Now, there's nothing fictitious about that. That's just exactly scriptural. All right. Now, we find that the, the wise man, the wise man of the old, followed the God-given substance. They followed the word of of God to the light. Amen. Because it was the Word that brought life. Amen. Now you say, how did they follow? Well, they were kind of magis, we understand. And then we find out that Balaam, the prophet, back in Numbers 24, 17, uh, Balaam was kind of a magi himself. He was a prophet, truly. And he prophesied here and said a star would rise out of Jacob. And when these wise men saw that the word of God said a star would rise out of Jacob, they followed that little God-given token to the source of eternal life. So will wise men today. Who is not blinded by creeds Amen. will follow the God-given spoken word till they see the fullness of the power of God moving forth Amen. in this hour. Amen. They, they see it and they know that it's here in the Scripture. God promised it for this day. 
No matter how many observatories, how many other things told the wise man, well, you're out of your mind. Two years, there was some travel. They passed by many nations. And they said, where are you going? Oh, we have seen his star in the east, and we come to worship him. Amen. Amen. And when they lined up in Jerusalem, the denominational headquarters, they didn't have the answer. Amen. They went up and down the streets crying, where is he? Born king of the Jews, they know nothing about it. So they called on the word to find out. They had followed, known that star was leading them to the eternal light. Guide us to thy perfect light. And the Word is what guides you to the light, and the light's what makes the Word vindicated. Amen. Amen. Notice, they were wise men. And wise men today, not why the wisdom in this world is foolishness to God. All your scientists and you people who are depending on some great scholarship or something or another telling you how to split an atom, it can't give you life. There's nothing can give you life but the spoken word of God. It's the only word that life can come is through His spoken word. And that's all right to know how to split an atom. I wish they never found it out. But if they, they have to do it because this world is hanging today. It had to happen to burst these big holes in the earth to let that lava come forth and rejuvenate this world again. To make a new earth. Amen. Where the righteous will walk out upon the dust of the oh, wicked. Amen. Amen. Where sin will be forgotten. Everything has a way of renewing itself. And man who is given to live on this earth, by his own wisdom, taking a tree of knowledge instead of the tree of life, he'll destroy the earth that God gave him to live on. But those who are still on the tree of life shall come to a new heavens and a new earth where there is no sickness or death. Light. Light, Lord, send us light. It was the angels of God that showed light upon the hill to guide the shepherds to the eternal light. See, it only comes by light. Light can only come by light. The shepherds wanting to know. You know, when a king is born, they have singing. Great carrying on when the king is born. Now, he was so secretly born and born in a stable... Uh, in a manger where the cattle and horses was eating. But yet, he was a king. And the, the angels came down and sang the hymns to the shepherds in the light. The angels themselves were lights that showed with the Word of God. They had the Word of God and told them, Today in the city of David, in Bethlehem, is born Christ the Savior. Amen. The angels had the word and the word came by light to God. And they followed the word of the angels to the eternal light. They found the baby there wrapped in swaddling cloths as they had said. For you see, life only comes by light. Notice, he was the word made light or became light. The word in that generation, he was the word light of that generation because the prophets of old had spoke of him. And here he come and vindicated he was the light of God's spoken word. Yeah. See? All the prophets had, uh, had said had been fulfilled in him. See? The prophets back here with the word like God was at the beginning when he said, let there be light. And light came. Now the prophet said, a virgin shall conceive, bring forth the son. They shall call his name Emmanuel, for it will be God with us. Now they had spoken, the word had went out, but he was the light. Amen. What was he? The fulfillment. Amen. 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 He was the fulfillment of that word. Amen. He was a manifestation of that word. Amen. So is it today. Amen. God's word has been fulfilled at the hour. That's the light. It's God manifesting Himself. He was a light of the world. And when the prophets inspired by the Holy Spirit said, Unto us a child is born. Unto us a a son is given, or a child is given. And His name shall be called Counselor, Prince of Peace, Mighty God, Everlasting Father. There it was. What was He? The light that fulfilled that word. Amen. Amen. The light that fulfilled that word. And Matthew and St. 
Matthew, the 28th chapter, we find. And uh, when Jesus raised from the dead, he also was the light of the spoken word of David, which said, I'll not leave his soul in hell, Amen. neither I'll suffer my holy one to see corruption. Amen. Death was in darkness. But he broke open the seals of death. Amen. I walked into it and come back out again. He was the light that vindicated oh, yeah. him that the dead can live after they are dead. He was. On the day of Pentecost, that was the light that showed when the Holy Ghost had come. Isaiah said in the 28th chapter of Isaiah, Isaiah said that with precept must be upon precept. Line must be upon line. Here a little and there a little. Hold fast to that. What's good? For with stammering lips and with other tongues will I speak to this people. And this is the rest. Amen. This is the Sabbath. Amen. And I'll give to And all this they would not hear. Walked away and wagged their heads. Amen. And when on the day of Pentecost, when the Holy Ghost fell upon those people and they acted like drunk men and women, staggered under the impact of the Holy Spirit, and they walked away and wagged their heads and said, this people's drunk, full of new wine, and so forth. It absolutely was the light. Yes. The yes. word that had been prophesied made manifest. Amen. Amen. So is it in every age. Amen. The word made manifest come to life is the light of that age. Amen. There the word made manifest. It's like was it Genesis 1. When God said, let there be light, and there was light. Yes. When God said there will be a son, and there was a son. Amen. When God said in Joel 2.28, It shall come to pass in the last days, I'll pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and daughters shall prophesy upon my hands, maids and maids, several I'll pour out my spirit. Your young man shall see visions, your old man shall see dreams. And all these things that he promised, when it, the Holy Ghost fell, was the light upon that word. Amen. When the word was made manifest, then it become light. Amen. Amen. He is the light. He is the light that we should follow. He is the only light. The angels found light and followed it to Him. Now, in all ages, God has set forth so much of His Word for each age. God always sends somebody that that Word can get into and show the light of it. At every age, it does the same thing. Always does that. He was a fulfillment, as I said, of all the divine, holy powers of the prophets. They were minor gods. When the word of the Lord came to a man, Jesus said himself, and he was a God. Yes. You know that. Yes. He said, if your law said, and your fathers back there, call them who the word of God came to, call them gods. Yes. How can you condemn me, he said, when I said I'm the son of that God? Yes. Okay? When the very God himself, who spoke the word through the prophets, he was a manifestation of that spoken word. Yes. Yes. If the prophet was called a God because he was the manifestation of another prophet's word, how could you condemn him when he was the same thing? He was the Son of God, Amen. as he shall be called the Son of God. He was a long-promised Messiah that the world had waited on. He was the Messiah's promise made manifest. Look at him when he stood there. He said, if I do not the works of my Father, then condemn me. See, but if you can't believe me, believe the works that I do. They testify who I am. They tell you who I am. You see that blind, darkened hour that they live in? They couldn't see it. They just couldn't understand. How could he be that? How can he be any son of God when he's born right down here in Bethlehem? If he only knew the word said, it would come that way. Amen. Why, his father Joseph is a carpenter. His mother, why, it's actually believed amongst our brethren that he was born illegitimately. See, but yet the Word of God said that. He said, search the Scriptures. Amen. For in them you think you have eternal life. Amen. And they are the very ones that testify who I am. Amen. Amen. They are the ones that testify me. This Holy Scriptures. Then what was it? God's light. No wonder He said, I am the light of the world. Amen. Not only did He say, I am the light, but He said, ye are the light. Amen. If His Word is in you, bearing record of itself, then you are light of the world. Notice, we find out, light of each age made manifest, just the same. Then I want to ask the question as, for time gets away, why, why, then were they, uh, did they turn it down? 
How could they do it? When the, their very Bible that they was reading was being made manifest before them. Yes. Now, I study real hard now. I remember I'm talking to many people at this time, you see. Not just four or five hundred here. But I'm, I'm talking to many thousands. Stop just a minute. Stop your tape recorder and ask the question, why would religious man, good man, why would Joseph question? See? Why would you? Because he never searched the Scripture. Amen. Why did the priest question? One reason they didn't, they knew it. Nicodemus well expressed it. He said, Rabbi, we know you're a teacher from God. No man could do what you do except God be with him. We're aware of that. But what was it? Their traditions kept them from doing it. Then why were they, did they reject the Messiah? Is be, why did they reject that light? Here's the word that they know was coming to pass. But when the word was made manifest to show that the word of God had been fulfilled. Compare that with today. Amen. Amen. When they're written in the word that, that would take place. Amen. Then why did those men reject it? Yes. Teachers. Amen. Because they were living in a glare of another life. Amen. That's it. There's living in a glare. That's the thing they're doing today. They're living. The reason they turn it down is because they're living in a glare of another light. Amen. See? Amen. Now. They was living in a glare of what Moses said. They claimed. Amen. They was living in a glare of what another age had passed by. And that's the very reason today that this message, that Jesus Christ still is the same, Amen. is turned down because the people are living in glares yes. of other ages. Amen. The same reason. They turn it down. Now we notice... And Webster says that a glare is kind of a false light. A glare is a false light. Is anything a glare? It's like, like a mirage on the road. You go down the road, many of you driving cars, and look down ahead of you. When you see that sun on the ground, it reflects a light. And like a mirage, it looks like there's water all over the road. But when you get there, there's nothing there. It's only a false mirage, the glare of a true light. Amen. That's what the devil's doing today. Amen. It's showing people a mirage. Amen. A council of churches, a group of denominations, which will turn out to be false. Amen. Because it's because there is a real light shining. Amen. Amen. That real light wasn't shining, the mirage couldn't be there. Amen. Real light shines. And that's their living in a glare of another age. Yeah. Another thing for it's hitting, passed on. Now, a glare of this mirage is false. It's a glare of the sun. And that's why they did the same thing. A false glare of the true light. Now, it proved to be that he was the true light. Yes, he, was. he was the light. Amen. Why did they know? That he was the light. How could you know he was the light? Because the word that was promised was made manifest through him. So he was the light of that spoken word. Amen. 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 Oh, that would almost make me a Pentecostal Baptist shout. <laughs> what was thinking of? A glare. See? Living in a glare. But when the true word is living, that's the light. What God said. Now what if God said in the beginning, uh, let there be light? <laughs> well, and uh, there was something else appeared. That's right. yeah. See, just a mirage. Yeah. See, it wouldn't have been though what God said. Yeah. No, it wouldn't have been. What if God said, let there be light and more fog came? Yeah. See, it wouldn't have been light. But the reason light come, it was His Word manifested. Yeah. And today when God has said such things will take place, at this time, and you see it doing it, what is it? It's the light on God's Word. Yes. Yes. It's Word being made light. Yes. Manifest itself. Now, they said, who do you say we are? Why, well, I said, you try to, we know that you're crazy. Why, well, you're a Samaritan. You haven't got your right mind. Well, you try to, who can tell, we know you're born in sin. 
We don't know where you come from. We have no record of your identification in our groups. Wow, you're crazy. You got a devil. See? Say, well, you're out of your mind. But he was actually the genuine, true light of God shining. Amen. And the glare had put up their eyes out. We have Moses as our guide. He said, if you would have believed Moses, you'd have known me. And if you'd believe Jesus and the Bible, you'd know this hour. Amen. Amen. They say, well, we're Christians. We, if you were, you would know the acts of Christ for this day. You'd know it. Jesus said, all those prophets spoke of me. And if you believe those prophets, you'll know me. My works identify because what they said I do, I do it. And who can condemn me now of unbelief? And still they didn't see it. Why? Their eyes were put out with a glare. See, the glare of something else. That they had taken what the true spoken word was. Now, think of it. Think of it. They claim that they believed that word. But their traditions had turned their faces from the true word to a glare. Yeah. Therefore, they couldn't see the real thing. Amen. So is it today. Amen. So has it been in every age. See, the, the true word shines. But they have been so traditionalized that they can't see that word. They're looking at a glare and they're blind. A glare will blind you. It's an arc off of it. It'll blind you. And it'll, when it, the, Jesus said, you are blind, yes. leading the blind. Amen. They should have been able to see it, to see who he was. But they didn't because they was living in that glare. Now, a glare, as I said, is a false light, a mirage, a false conception of the true light. False conception. It's something that, that's supposed to look like it. But it isn't that. Now, the only way they could tell the difference, because the very things that Jesus did proved who he was. That he was the light. They thought they was in the light. But now, if you just stop a minute and consider who is in the light then. Now, today, if such a rational mistake was made by the churchmen of that day, such a rational thing was done, brethren, don't you think that it's time that we stopped and considered what is light? Amen. Let us not make such a rational mistake. Amen. But you're doing it. You've already done it. And knew it not. Same as it was then. Now stop just a minute and find out what the Word says for today. If they had stopped and thought, here he is fulfilling to the letter exactly what the Word said he would do. And he challenged them as I'm challenging you. Amen. I'm challenging you to look in the Word. Amen. Search the Scripture. Amen. See if this isn't the hour. Amen. Search the Scripture. So you and them you think you have eternal life. And they are they that testify of me. Amen. They are they that testify of this work today. Amen. The works itself testifies. That is being done and the scripture says it will be done so it's a light of the hour. God's word said so. Your traditions and things is exactly what the Bible said. Like those who wag their heads and walked away. All the tables become full of vomit. The Bible said. And that's where they wouldn't believe it. They wag their heads and gentlemen do you realize and brother do you realize this that when you are rejecting the very thing that God's vindicating before you that you're doing the same thing they did right. going back to your traditional vomit right. as a dog goes to its vomit if it made him sick the first time it'll make him sick the second time right. if the Catholic Church being organized made the first organization brought sickness to the church so will Lutheran, Methodist, and all the rest of them. Baptist, Presbyterian, and Pentecostal. Amen. A dog goes back to its vomit, and a sow goes back to her water. Yes. Okay. Yes. We're getting to that in a few minutes, the Lord with me. Glare. Walking in a glare. A mirage, a false conception of true life. 
He proved that he was the light because he, being in a way in a minority, oh my, millions against him. Yes. Yes. There was not one sixth of the people, one ninetieth of the people on the earth ever know he was here. Amen. Not, I guess, one one hundredth of the Jews, or hardly one fiftieth of them, or fortieth of them, I see, maybe less than that, of his own country ever know he was there. And them that did know he was there considered him a false. But something because the denomination told him that's what he was. Right. But yet he was the true light that had been spoke since Genesis in the beginning. Yeah. And asked them to search the scriptures and find out if he wasn't living just in that time. If he, the works that he did didn't fulfill exactly what was promised at that time. Amen. Amen. <laughs> what a serious thing it is, brother. We're living in a tremendous time. He proved to be the right. He was the very light that they claimed they were worshiping. They claimed to be worshiping that light. And so is it today. They claim they're worshiping that. Pentecostals claim it. They claim they are. It's so blind they can't see it. Why? They organize them by the glare in their face. They, a tradition is what some people set together and said, we're going to make this and this and this and that. Now we're going to come to why that has to happen. The Lord willing. Notice. His works was the living word itself. What he did was the living word itself. Yes. Showing he was that light that had been promised since the beginning of the world. He was that light. His light on the promised word of the age made it live to exactly what the promise said it would do. But they had it so turned around until they couldn't see it. See, but he was the light of that age. He was the light of that they claimed to be worshiping. They thought that they were worshiping the very God of creation. They was living in worshiping the glare. And Jesus said, You worship me in vain. Yes. Teaching for doctrine the traditions of man. Right. And not the Word. Amen. He is the Word. And He was the Word made manifest. Amen. They ought to have known it. Amen. I hope that can break through. Every horse heard. Amen. Hmm? That it is the Word made manifest. Oh, say, oh, we have the Word. Well, the Word, everybody pack a Bible that wants to. But when the Word is vindicated, yeah. made Amen. manifest, Amen. well, say, well, we believe. Yes, sir, they believed all the way along. So does Satan. Amen. Those Pharisees who could condemn them not believing. Yeah. But they didn't believe the Word for the hour. Yeah. They were worshiping the glare of something else. That's the same thing they're doing today. Amen. They're keeping up Luther's traditions or uh, Wesley's traditions and the rest of them, the Pentecostal traditions, but what of the hour? Amen. The yeah. Pharisees was keeping up their traditions. Yeah. But behind their traditions was the true Word of God yeah. coming to shine forth and when it did, it blinded their eyes. Yeah. They couldn't see it because they was watching something else. Oh. So is it today. May God let that soak in until yeah. it really hits home to the people that should believe it. It's later than you think. Amen. My son, Billy Paul, he talks in his sleep, but he doesn't have dreams very often. He had one the other night that shook him up. So he dreamed he was at a church, and, and they, I hadn't come in yet, so they come in, fire was flying out of the eyes. And I said, the time is here. It's over. And uh, everybody began screaming. I came, my children, and me and my wife said, I can't get Sarah to ask the blessing at the table, and so forth. And I said, he said, I've got to go get Lois and, and the baby. I said, Lois can't come now. The baby's too young to know. Billy, the hour is here. We must go. I said, it's midnight now. Before daylight, uh, Jesus will be here. If it isn't, then I'm a false witness of Christ. And somebody spoke up and said, no man knows the minute or hour. I said, minute or hour. I said, sometime between now and daylight. And I said, Hallelujah. I said, but we're at the time. Let's go. And we got in the car and started. And we started up the mountain. And when we did, it, was, it looked like the light was coming in the skies, but dark upon the earth. He said, I pulled off the side of the road and held my hands over like this. Fire still flying from my eyes. And he said, I said, Lord, I did this at your command. I did this just because that you told me to do it this way. I did these things according to what you've told me. And I motioned to a big granite mountain. And a, a light without hands cut a stone out of the mountain, weighing hundreds of tons. And here it comes. I said, turn your heads. Don't look. It'll be, all be over just in a few minutes. Oh, so then a great holy hush come everywhere as this stone come towards your place. 
It may be later than we think. There, see, that's exactly scriptural, you see. The stone without hands cut out of mountain. And uh, so uh, one of these days, it's going to be that way. When you're going to scream for something, I said to him, you've already had that time. God has constantly warned you time after time. Yeah, I said, even if it's my own kid or whoever it is, the hour is here. I can only say what he's told me to say and he'll be here. And it was. And, and then all of a sudden, here he comes, the stone cut out of the mountain without hands. Daniel saw that, you know, back many years ago. Billy knew nothing about that. But it was, a, it was a dream sent to him from the Lord. Now, see, they claim to be worshiping that very God that they were making fun of. And the same thing has reversed again today by the same reason. Living in a glare instead of the light. Great light says a shine. All right. Look what darkness we're in today. Look what's going on today. Look at murder, rape, strife. Why it's come to pass... I believe it was Billy Graham said in his last meeting, in 10 years now, every citizen of California had to pack a gun to protect themselves. You can't put enough law enforcement. The people just gone insane. No, Shooting, murder, and rapes, everything. See, it's just gone wild. See, up on the streets. It's a, it's a day we're living in, a sodomite day. See, but there is a light shining. Amen. If it only look, if it only see, look into the Word and see what's supposed to be in this hour, they would know what's trying to be done. Now, they claim they're worshiping that light. So did they claim they're worshiping that light. But they were worshiping it in a glare of another light instead of the real. See, he was the light. Creeds and traditions and their blinded condition had turned them from the true light of the promised word. The word that God had vindicated by Jesus, the light of the world, came and made that word live right exactly through his time, exactly to the days. He'll be cut off in the midst of the 70 weeks. That's right. Which is the three and a half years of his prophecy. The Messiah would come, the prince, and would prophesy. In three and a half days of this, then he'd be cut off from the living and make uh, atonement. And that's exactly, he preached three and a half years. And in the very psalm that David said, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? The 22nd psalm. All my bones, they stare at me. They wag their heads. They pass by me. 850 years beforehand when David sung that song in the Spirit, and it was considered prophecy and given. They're singing them songs in the temple when the same sacrifice is hanging on the cross. Yeah. His hands that pierced, and they pierce my hands and my feet. Yes. See, there they, why they were living in a glare. They didn't see the light. Could you imagine a sensible person doing that? No more than I can imagine a sensible person running down the basement and getting a must and pulling his doors together and saying, I refuse to see there's light. It's insanity. And a spiritual slip somewhere when a man sees that the Bible has promised this and see it living right out before him and made manifest and then continually stay in those creeds and things out there that reject. It's a spiritual delinquency. That's exactly right. Here he was. Now, he was... He was the light of the world, and the world knew he came to his own. His own knew him not. He came into the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. But as many as did know him, to them he gave power to become sons of God. To them that believed on him. Remember, we cannot live by yesterday's light. Yesterday's light is gone. It isn't no more. It, the, yesterday's light is only a memory. Yesterday's sunlight is only a memory. Or it's history. We cannot live in yesterday's light. No more. And the same, though it's the same sun, the same sun, but each day it brings forth its strength a little stronger to ripen the grain for the harvest. Amen. See? The sun comes today, gets a little stronger each day. Now it'll get a little stronger, a little stronger. And finally, the wheat that's laying there, it'll, it'll go take a life. After a while, the, the life will come up. Then a little stronger, a little stronger. March, April, May. June, July. She's in the harvest thing, you see. Amen. The same sun shining today in, in January or December. It's up there bathing that snow and melting it down on that grain, bringing it water. It's the same sun, but that wheat could not live in that same sunlight That's right. That's right. in June. That's right. see? It can't do it. See, the sun comes a little stronger each day. And the grain should be a little more matured to receive the sunlight. Amen. That's what's the matter today. The grain that was sold in the early fathers back there and, and Luther and Wesley and them, it dwarfed. It can't take the sun. The sun kills it. It refused to grow. It, cut it, it took itself from the stalk light and come over here and made itself a own little thing, become a husk then. 
no life in it. The grain should be maturing and getting stronger as the sun becomes stronger each day. Now let's watch a minute. We watch the church ages. There are seven church ages. And as those church ages, each one, watch how he spoke to them, what would do. How the grain would mature and come down to this last hour here. This last hour that we're living in. So the churches must do the same thing. See, the churches. Now look, Luther sold a grain. And Luther was a grain. And he sold it. All right? So was Wesley. And also, so was Pentecostal. So was the Baptists, the Nazarenes. But you see, now, Luther would not go back and live in the light of the first denomination, Catholic. No, sir, he was another light. That was God writing something. Now, a little minority come out of that, that Lutheran uh, uh, revival. Then come along the Wesley revival. And then in that, well, they couldn't go back and do the Lutherans. Right. And now along come the Pentecostals. And then the Pentecostals organized and done the same thing, taking the husk. Notice, but the grain goes right on. Yes. Amen. Now we're in another age. Amen. Why won't they receive it? Why won't they see that the grain is matured? Here's a promised word for this day. Right. Why don't they see it? Because they're living in Lutheran glare. Yeah. Wesley glare, Baptist glare, Pentecostal glare. Amen. They're living in the glare of another light. Amen. That's the reason they can't receive the light of the total word being vindicated as God promised them seven seals where the whole mystery was revealed. We'll come back and tell why these mysteries was done like that. And yet when that comes in, they walk farther away from it than ever. Amen. They're without excuse. God has done it to Spirit through revelations. He's, he's proved it perfectly by scientific and everything else that it's the truth. Amen. That it's the truth. Amen. And still they want to live in a Pentecostal glare. Yes. I am the assemblies. I am the oneness. I'm the church of God. I'm this. See? Living in a glare of an age 40, 50 years ago. Amen. Living in a Lutheran glare. Living in a Wesley, a Baptist, a Presbyterian, or some Nazarene glare. Of another church age that went on and organized and done the same thing and refused and reject the light when it's actually shining and you're living in a mirage. Amen. Amen. I say that reverently. But you're not to hurt you, but to wake you up. You're living in a mirage. What if Jesus said, Well, you're blind and you're leading the blind? They can he tried to tell them and then they said, Let them alone. If a blind leads a blind, they'll all fall in the ditch. That's the hour I've come to. Yes. If I go to stagger, I can't help it. That's right. I've done all I can do. Amen. I've done exactly. I've done this at your command, Lord. Amen. 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 You're a witness. Amen. Since 19 and 33, down on the river on that light, there you see, shine down. It's been right here in the tabernacle and witness to you all these years and everything it said has come to pass. Amen. And continually they go on. My God. Let the blind lead the blind. Amen. Amen. I'll just wait for that hour. He'll arrive one of these days. Amen. Notice. Living in a glare of Luther. Living in a glare of Wesley. Living in them glares back there. That's the reason they can't see true light. If they would stop for a few minutes and just pick up the Bible and read it, they would see that the, this is light promised for the hour. Amen. 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 Yeah. Now we're going to take some of these things in a minute. He promised, according to Malachi 4, these things would happen. Amen. He Amen. promised all through the Scriptures they would happen. See? Notice. Israel also our type in the journey. Look, eating manna, which was their light life, that give them strength, life. Is that right? Yes, yes. Israel could not eat manna that was yesterday had fallen. Amen. It was contaminated. Amen. It was rotten. Amen. It was no good for them. They'd die over it. The manna that kept them alive yesterday would kill them today. Right. The Bible said it got germs in it, contaminated. And the man, they had to get new manna every day. Amen. 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 And what is it? The people that live on manna of Luther, Wesley, and them back in there, you're eating contaminated stuff that's killing you spiritually. Amen. Amen. It's killing you. Dead in your traditions. Yesterday's Luther's manna. Would not work for Methodist. Methodist manna would not work for Pentecost. Amen. Pentecostal manna will not work for the day. Amen. See what I mean? Every day it come, day by day fresh. Amen. And so has it 
through the church ages. Luther's manna was a message of justification. Wesley's message was a manifestation of sanctification. Pentecostal was a restoration of the gifts. But this is introducing the headstone. The last day, the bride tree. Contrary to all of it. And yet it's the same light for the matured, like the same sun shining today will be ripening the grain for the harvest in July. Amen. See what I mean? But the light today won't do any good back there in July. It's stronger. The wheat's more advanced. It's ready to take it. Amen. 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 It certainly is. Amen. It couldn't take it now. It can then. The season wasn't right then. It is now. You can't go against God's nature. He's got a law. Amen. And the contrary, that law kills your plant. You've got to go according to God's spoken laws. And His laws is His word. Amen. Any law is a word spoken. And a word is a thought manifested. See? Now we, we know that that's true. A vision is what? The word of God or something foretold or a forecast of an event. And a vision that the prophets had and Jesus had, Paul had, and all of them telling this day was a forecast of what would happen. Amen. And here we see the forecast being made manifest and people don't even recognize it. Amen. 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 Right. God help them. See what I mean? Yes. Now, yesterday's man. Look here. Did you ever notice the sun, S-U-N, has traveled east to the west as it's went each time? Did you notice that? And notice, the church ages did the same thing. What the sun, S-O-S-U-N, started in the east, and civilization has traveled with the sun. God spoke in light for them to live in. They've come on following the sun, see where it was going. Life itself, when you're born, it's like a sun. You go on right on to the setting of the sun. From your birth to the setting of the sun. Man has traveled westward always. The oldest civilization we have is China. In the eastern countries, Jerusalem. And notice, she keeps traveling westward as it goes. And as it goes on and on to the west, so has the church age traveled the same way by the S-O-N of God. Amen. Look, Paul, the early church started in the east. It went from there, jumped across the, 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 the sea over into Germany. It's made three pulls. Look here, from Asia down in, in Palestine, it jumped across the ocean to Germany. That was Luther. And it jumped from Luther across the English Channel over into England by Wesley. And from Wesley, she jumped to the West Coast, Amen. to the United States. And this, if you go any further, it's coming back east again. Amen. 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 This is the evening time. Amen. 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 All right. Look. How the church ages has fall. Luther, Paul first, back in the early age. They come down to Ireland, Irenaeus and so forth. On down into France. From there over into Germany. Over into England. Constantly going west. Amen. And now we can't go no further. Amen. Right. This is the last age. Amen. And what does the Bible say about this last age? Amen. See, geographically, chronologists. Any way you want to take it, scripturally. First, scripture, of course, first. Evidence. Historically. Any way you want to take it, we're at the end. Amen. The last church age. And watch. As it went forward, it grew stronger and stronger. And so has the real little minority of the church. Grown from justification, sanctification, baptism of the Holy Ghost, and now to the coming capstone. Shaping itself up. No more organizations after this. There won't be no more. See? Can't be. See, we're on the west. Just to show you through all types and everything else. And look at those three jumps. Three pulls. We'll get into that tonight. See, see how we're at the end time. It's just uh, S-U-N has traveled like S-O-N. S-O-N like S-U-N. The church has come the same thing from the seven church ages and so forth. Civilizations moved right on to the west. And the church has moved right on to the west. And now, if we go any further than what we are now, we come back east again. You leave the west coast, you go right back into China, Japan, right back in again, 7,000 miles across, you go right back to the east again. So east and west has met. That's all of it. 
We're at the end. There's nothing left. And the same thing has happened today. It happened back there. The same thing is met at the West that was met at the East. The people living in a glare of another light that was absolutely trying to show forth the light was come and reject it because it got the glare instead of the light. Oh, and there was great light in the land of the Gentiles. Zebulun, Nephilim, of Galilee, land of the Gentiles. This is the seventh church age. Remember. And each time that that sun began to shine in the east is the same sun that shines in the west. And the same spirit that's been all down through the ages like that is the same sun today. Only what is it? Just like ripening the season. The sun that's now will be the same sun that ripens the grain this fall, this autumn. See? But what is it? It's this sun plus what it will be. Amen. And today in this last age is what they were plus this. Amen. And that they will live back there as a dwarf. Yeah. Go down into a busty old inner old nominational basement and creed and pull her blinds us out. I just refuse to see it. It's all nonsense. And when the very Bible that they claim to believe is being identified by the same Holy Spirit yeah. bringing light in the last days. Did you notice, and watch real close there in Malachi, how a lot of that, the faith of the fathers to the children, and the children to the fathers. See, the same spirit, where it raised back out, or where it raises here again, the same thing. He just bites the mercy exactly, sitting right back again. Because why? East and West is met. Just exactly right under our face, and yet they don't see it. Why? No wonder Jesus said, just let them alone then. They're blind, lead the blind. They'll all fall in the ditch. The light of other ages only reflected this light. See, the sun today only reflects as a reflection of the sun that will be this July or August of God for the harvest. And the son of Luther, Martin Luther, and Wesley, and Sankey, Finney, Knox, Calvin, Moody, all them others, that great man back in there that had those lights, John Smith of the Baptist Church, and Alexander Campbell of the Camelite Church, and the so-called Disciples of Christ, Christian Church, and whatever more names he got for them. All them men back there in their ages was only reflecting what it will be here at the end. And then here the children, immediately after them founders, what did they do? They didn't stay on the stalk. They pulled away from it and made themselves a little husk thing out here, which you get away from the real source of life. You have no life. Amen. You take a husk off the thing and plant it out here in the ground, it'll lay there and rot. Amen. And so are you trying to eat rotten manna from back in them days. The harvest is ripe. Amen. Jesus Amen. has a table spread oh, no. for the of God Amen. on ripe food of the day by the gospel light that it vindicates it. Amen. The saints eat the bread. Amen. Just think. The old husk of yesterday. See, don't plant it back there. It's rotten. It cannot, it cannot stay with it. No, sir. It will not do no good. It won't grow. It's all for the life. And the Word is the life. Amen. That's right. The husk drops off. The little beard falls away. Things like that. It just denominates itself and drops off. It refuses to go on with the life. Yeah. But the light vindicates it. Oh, my. Yesterday, yesterday. It's, oh, my. How we are to see that. See, that the rotten things of yesterday don't eat them today. See? It's got worms in it. You know these little wiggle tails? I call them, I don't know. I, I don't know much about germ life, but I know we always call them wiggle tails. It gets in anything when it gets a little rotten. See? I don't want it then. If you're satisfied with it, go ahead. But not me. But remember, you say, then why was it good yesterday? If you only knew that the very little hull that was on the wheat at the beginning, if it abides in the grain, it makes the grain further. Yeah. That's the very thing that makes the wheat flour. Yeah. It's what was yesterday. But if it separates itself from the grain and don't mature, then it goes away. But if it goes through the process of life-giving process, as it dies out, it just blends into something else. It makes the grain. Amen. If it isn't, where does it come from? Amen. 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 You get it? Amen. Amen. You get it? Praise God. Amen. I've been enjoying this message very much. Um, I want to go through the questions now. If we can pull you out, back up. So what guides you to the light? Let's go back to paragraph 91. 
Now, as Brother Bram goes through this, he adds so much more to it. I'm just going to highlight a couple phrases he says here in a few parts that he talks about. But you could end up highlighting your whole book. What guides you to the light? Paragraph 91 at the top of page 17. Now we find that the wise men, the wise men of old followed the God-given substance. They followed the word of God to the light because it was the word that brought life. Now you say, how did they follow? Well, they were kind of magi, as we understand. And then we find out that Balaam, the prophet, back in Numbers 24, 17, Balaam was kind of a magi himself. He was a prophet truly, and he prophesied here and said a star would rise out of Jacob. And when these wise men saw the word of God said a star would rise out of Jacob, they followed that little God-given token to the source of eternal life. So will wise men today who is not blinded by creeds and will follow the God-given spoken word till they see the fullness of the power of God blooming forth in this hour. They see it and they know that it's here in the scripture God promised it for this day. So we're, we're looking here, he's showing through, the, through Balaam, Balaam laid down a prophecy that a star will rise out of Jacob and they saw it in the heavens, amen? And when they saw it in the heavens, they knew that was the prophecy and they followed that word all the way to the manifestation of that word till they found the baby or the young child, when they found the young child. Let's go down to paragraph 94. Oh, we have seen a star in the east and we come to worship him. And then they lined up in Jerusalem, the denominational headquarters. They didn't have the answer. They went up and down the street crying, where is he born king of the Jews? They know nothing about it. So they called on the word to find out. They had followed, know that star was leading them to the eternal light. Guide us to thy perfect light. And the word is what guides you to the light. So what guides you to the light? The word. So that's why we don't just take willy-nilly anything that happens. It's got to be a manifestation of the word. It's the word that lights us to the light. Amen. And when the word is made manifest, it's light and it's life. That's the source of life for us. Amen. So we must come where the, where the, word, the, word, the word is made manifest, where the word is made light, and it becomes our life. And the word is what guides you to the light, and the light is what makes the word vindicated. Notice they were wise men. Paragraph 95, and wise men today, the wisdom of this world is foolishness to God. All your scientists and you people who are depending on some great scholarship or something or another telling you how to split an atom, it can't give you life. There's nothing can give you life but the spoken word of God. It's only where that life can come is through his spoken word. So I am so glad Amen, that God gave us his word, amen, and then he makes the word live in our age, and that brings light and life, amen. Um, question number two, why did mankind need to learn how to split an atom? I thought this was absolutely fascinating. Paragraph 96 at the bottom of this page, and that's all right to know how to split an atom. I wish they'd never found it out, that they have to do it because this world is hanging today. It had to happen to burst these big holes in the earth to let that lava come forth and rejuvenate this world again to make a new earth where the righteous will walk out upon the dust of the wicked, where sin will be forgotten. Everything has a way of renewing itself. And man who was give, given to live on this earth by his own wisdom, taking the tree of knowledge instead of the tree of life, he'll destroy the earth that God gave him to live on but those who are still on the tree of life shall come to a new heavens and a new earth where there is no sickness or death. So why did man in this scientific age at the end time, think about when man began to learn how to split an atom and make an A-bomb, amen, it was between World War I and World War II, it was the same time that there was an end time prophet on the scene and everything was being set, the stage was being set, the finishing of everything took place in that man's lifetime and that's when man learned how to split an atom and made, it, made an atomic bomb. And what did he need to learn that for? So that he could blow holes in the earth crust to let the lava out to rejuvenate the earth for a millennium. My goodness, this word is too perfect, amen? Everything is too perfect, the timing is too perfect, and man will destroy himself. Man creates his own hell by nuclear fallout. Man burns off the earth by his own wisdom and not taking the word, but taking his own wisdom, and God allowed him to go that way, and God is gonna allow man to go far enough to create his own hell on earth, which will bring the purification of the earth, amen, for a millennial reign, for the honeymoon. And who's going to do it? it? It's not God. It's man doing it himself. 
So God allowed him to learn to split an atom because God knows, amen, that he's got to blow the holes in the earth crust to let the lava out. Praise be to God. He's going to rejuvenate this world with atomic and volcanic fire. And now how will the volcanic fire come? It'll start by atomic bombs. So when you hear the news, everybody's scared about atomic bombs. They ought to be scared. They're going to destroy themselves with them. But for us, we're not scared because it's a rejuvenation of the earth for the millennial reign. Praise God. Build more bombs. That's what's going on. That's why the tension is there. That's why the nuclear arms race is there. That's what it's all about, is a rejuvenation for the millennium. That's why we see the news differently than everybody else sees it, because we've already been told. Amen. Question number three, why did they reject the Messiah? Now, uh, let me go here to page... uh, well, let's start back. Let's, we'll, we'll lead into it. Let's go to page 113. Page 113. I'm sorry, paragraph 113. Page 21. Page 21, paragraph 113. Stop just a minute. Stop your tape recorder and ask the question, why would religious men, good men, why would Joseph question see? Because he never searched the scriptures. Why did the priest question? One reason they didn't, they knew it. Nicodemus well expressed it. He said, Rabbi, we know that you're a teacher from God. No man could do what you do except God be with him. We're aware of that. But what was it? Their traditions kept them from doing it. Then when, why were they, did they reject the Messiah? Why did they reject that light? Here's the word that they knowed was coming to pass. But when the word was made manifest to show that the word of God had been fulfilled, compare that with today. When they're written in the word that would take place, uh, what would take place, then why did those men reject it, teachers? Because they were living in a glare of another light. That is it. They was living in a glare. Why did they reject the Messiah? Because they was living in the glare of another light, of another age. Amen. And Brother Benham tells us in the middle of paragraph 114, compare that with today. The reason Brother Benham is spending so much time talking about Jesus and his ministry and the Pharisees and the rejection is because he wants you to see the parallel with today. It's the same thing. It's the same thing they're doing today. The reason they turned it down is because they were living in the glare of another light. Now, they was living in the glare of what Moses said they claimed. They was living in the glare of what another age had passed by, and that's the very reason today that this message that Jesus Christ is still the same is turned down because the people are living in glares of other ages. The same reason they'll turn it down now. We notice, and Webster says that a glare is a kind of a false light. A glare is a false light. Same thing that glares. Like a mirage on the road, you go down the road, and many of you driving cars and look down ahead of you, When you see the sun on the ground, it reflects a light like a mirage. Look like there's water all over the road, but when you get there, there's nothing there. It's only a false mirage, the glare of a true light. That's what the devil is doing today, is showing people a mirage, a council of churches, a group of denominations, which will turn out to be false, because it's because there is a real light shining. There has to be a real light to create a mirage. And they're looking back on a reflection of a day gone by, amen, and missing where the light is shining today, amen, because they're, they're caught in, the, in, the, in a mirage, they're caught in the glare of a previous age. But there was a real light shining in that day, a genuine, true light shining in that day, amen, but they're stuck in a mirage. It's because there was a real light shining. That real, light's, that real light wasn't shining, a mirage couldn't be there. Real light shines, and they're living in a glare of another age, another thing, for it's hit and it's passed on. Now, a glare of this mirage is false. It's a glare of the sun. Let's go over to paragraph 123 on page 22, at the bottom of page 22. And still they didn't see it. Their eyes were put out with a glare. See, the glare of something else that they had taken, what the true spoken word was. Now, think of it. Think of it. They claimed that they believed that word, but their traditions had turned their faces from the true word to a glare. Therefore, they couldn't see the real thing. They were blind to it. So is it today. So has it been in every age. 
The true word shines, but they have been so traditionalized that they can't see the word. They're looking at a glare, and they're blind. A glare will blind you. There's an arc off of it. It'll blind you. It, it will. When Jesus said, you are blind, leading the blind, they should have been able to see it, to see who, what, who he was, but they didn't because they was living in that glare. Now, a glare, as I said, is a false light, a mirage, a false conception of the true light. False conception, it's something that's supposed to look like it, but it isn't that. So they're stuck in the glare of another age. Paragraph 133 on the next page. He proved to be the right. He was the very light that they claimed they worship. They claim to be worshiping that light, and so is it today. They claim they are worshiping that that, that Pentecostal claim it. They claim they are so blind that they can't see it. They organize and put a glare in their face, a tradition that some people set together and said, well, we'll go and make this and this and this and that. Now we're going to come to why that has to happen, the Lord willing. Notice his works was the living word itself. What he did was the living word itself, showing he was that light that had been promised since the beginning of the world. He was that light. His light on the promised word of the age made it live to exactly what the promise said it would do. But they had it so turned around until they couldn't see it. But he was the light of the age. Let's keep reading. Let's read a couple more. He was the light that they claimed to be worshiping. They thought that they were worshiping the very God of creation. They was living and worshiping a glare. And Jesus said, you worship me in vain, teaching for doctrine the traditions of man and not the word. He is the word, and he was the word made manifest. They ought to have known it. I hope that can break through everywhere it's heard. See, that is the word made manifest. Oh, we have the word. Why the word? Everybody pack a Bible that wants to. But when the word is vindicated, made manifest. Why well, say, well, we believe. Yes, sir. They believe all the way along. So does Satan. Those Pharisees who would condemn them not believing who would condemn them not believing, but they didn't believe the word for the hour. They were worshiping the glare of something else. It's the same thing they're doing today. We're keeping up Luther's traditions or Wesley's traditions and the rest of them Pentecostal traditions. But what of the hour? The Pharisees was keeping up their traditions, but behind their tradition was the true word of God coming to shine forth. And when it did, it blinded their eyes. They couldn't see it because they was watching something else. So is it today. May God let that soak in till it really hits home to the people that would believe it. It's later than you think. I love at the top of this page when Brother Benham said, we have the word, uh, why the word everybody packs a Bible that wants to. The word, but when the word is vindicated and made manifest, then he goes right to the Pharisees. You can't tell the Pharisees that they didn't believe the word. They were carrying around scrolls. They were believing the Bible. They were believing what Moses wrote. Everybody today that claims to be a Christian can pack a Bible and say they believe the word. But there's one critical part of the word that they're failing to believe, and that's the word that is made in flesh today. The word that is light today is the part that they're failing. And when they're failing that, they're living in the mirage, the glare of a previous age. And that glare won't bring life. Only present day light will bring life. That's what's so critical about uh, this message coming this hour and what Brother Bam's trying to get to the people to see is, yes, you believe. You believe in what's been done. You believe in what's been said. You believe in what's been wrote. But you're rejecting Christ today. So all of that believing in what's been done, amen, is not bringing life unless you come to life, which is light for the day. Amen. Let's look at uh, one more, paragraph 156. Let's go over to 156 on the bottom of page 28. We're still in the same question, why did they reject the Messiah? Brother Branham is typing it with this day. Remember, he talks about civilization and the gospel has traveled from east to west. Civilizations come from east to west. It's traveled from China. He says the oldest civilization all the way across. Now it's up against the west coast of the United States. It can't go any further or it'll be back east in Japan and China again. He says, so that's an indication that we've come to the end. 
And he said the gospels traveled the same way. And he says it went from it went from Palestine, it crossed the Mediterranean Sea up into Germany and Europe, it crossed the uh, uh, English Channel over into England in Wesley's day, then it crossed the Atlantic Ocean to come to the United States. He said that was three pulls of the gospel. He said, now it's gone all the way to the West Coast. It can't go. Everything's finished. It's done. East has met West. We're at the end. And what they're doing now that this Messiah is here is the same thing they did when the Messiah came the first time. Showing who's here and who's being rejected. Amen. Paragraph 156 here at the bottom of 28. But the grain goes right on. Now we're in another age. Why won't they receive it? Why won't they see that the grain has matured? Here is the promised word for the day. Why don't they see it? Because they're living in Lutheran glare, Wesleyan glare, Baptist glare, Pentecostal glare. They're living the glare of another light. That's the reason they can't receive the light of the total word being vindicated as God promised. Them seven seals where the whole mystery was revealed would come back and tell why these mysteries was done like that. And yet, Yet, when that comes in, they walk further away from it than ever. They're without excuse. God has done it through spirit, through revelations. He's proved it perfectly by scientific and everything else that it's the truth, that it, it, it's the truth. And still they want to live in a Pentecostal glare. I'm the assemblies. I'm the oneness. I'm the church of God. I'm this. See, living in the glare of an age 40, 50 years ago, living in the Lutheran glare, living in a Wesley, a Baptist, a Presbyterian, or some Nazarene glare of another church age that went on and organized and done the same thing and refuse and reject the light when it's actually shining. My, the same thing that happened 2,000 years ago is happening again today. All right, I had the question, question number four, what is the light? There's so many answers for this, but there's something Brother Bram says specifically I want to look at, and we'll go back to paragraph 125 at the top part of page 23. What is light? He says, now a glare, as I said, is a false light, a mirage, a false conception of the true light. False conception is something that's supposed to look like it, but it isn't that. Now, the only way they could tell the difference because the very things that Jesus did proved who he was, that he was the light. They thought they was in the light, but now if you just stop a minute and consider who is in the light then. Now, today, if such a rational mistake was made by the churchmen of that day, such a rational thing was did, brethren, don't you think that it's time that we stopped and considered what is light? Let us not make such a rational mistake, but you're doing it. You've already done it, see, and knew it not, same as they was then. Now, now stop just a minute and find out what the word says for today. So what is the light? The light is the word shining today. Not that was light in a previous day, but this is the light. The light is what's shining today. Amen. Paragraph 159. Paragraph 159. Notice, living in the glare of Luther, living in the glare of Wesley, living in them glares back there, that's the reason they can't see true light. They would stop for a minute and just pick up the Bible and read it. They would see that this is light promised for the hour. That's the light we need. And that'll lead us into the next question. Question number five, we cannot live by what kind of light? So we know we must live by light. Life comes by light, but what kind of light will not produce life? Let's go back to paragraph 150. Paragraph 150 at the bottom of page 27. Remember, we cannot live by yesterday's light. So what light can you not, what light doesn't bring life? Yesterday's light. What brings life? Today's light. Listen, did the sun shine yesterday? Yes. Did that sunshine produce life? Yes. But that sunshine that shined yesterday will not produce life today. There has to be a light shining today. And you could have went outside and taken a picture of a beautiful, bright, sunny day, and you could have brought the picture in and say, this is light. That's not light. That's only a picture of the light that was shining. In order to have light, you must have present tense light. You to have the real light must be the light today. Amen. 
Remember, we cannot live by yesterday's light. Yesterday's light is gone. It isn't no more. It's yesterday's light is only a memory. Yesterday's sunlight is only a memory or it's history. We cannot live in yesterday's light no more. And the same though, it's the same sun, the same sun, but each day it brings forth its strength a little stronger to ripen the grain for the harvest seed. The sun comes today and gets a little stronger. Each day now, you'll get a little stronger, a little stronger, till finally the wheat that's laying there, it'll go take life. The life will come up, then the little stronger, a little stronger, March, April, May, June, July, she's in the harvest, and you see the same sun shining today in January, December, that's up there bathing the snow and melting it down on the grain, bringing it water. It's the same sun, but what the wheat could not live in that same sunlight in June. So Brother Benham is showing us through the church ages, it's been the word all along. It's been the light of the manifested word all along. It was the light, it was the light from the first age to the seventh age. It's the same light, just like it's the same sunlight in January, it's the same sunlight in June. But what the difference is, it's intensifying in its strength as the seed is maturing. And so now, the, the, the seed that needs to live in a hot June, July, August light to come to full rapturing maturity, amen, that plant will not survive in that stage in January. It can't live. It'll die. So that's why if we come to the very end of time, when east has met west again, when the gospels went through three pulls, it's come to the west. It can't live in the light of a previous age. It'll die. It has to have the full power of the final light to bring it to full rapturing maturity. That's why even today we can never live in the past. We can't live in what? We can't just live in the first and second pull of Brother Benham's ministry, but the third pull, amen, brought Christ to us, amen, in bride form. And we can't even live on our experience from yesterday. We have to have fresh sunlight today. We have to walk in the light as Christ is unfolding himself in us. It can't be just what happened 50 years ago. It's got to be what's happening today. We can never stop staying in the present tense truth and staying in the sun. There's no time for us to stop and say, wasn't that a beautiful light that shone? It's got to be a beautiful light that's shining now to keep bringing us into full, full maturity, into the full light. Let's look at paragraph 161 on the bottom of page 29. Brother Bram's going to use another example to share the same thought, the same concept. Paragraph 161, notice Israel also our type in the journey. Look, eating manna, which was their light, life that give them strength, life. Is that right? Israel could not eat manna that was yesterday had fallen, fell on them. It was contaminated, it was rotten, it was no good for them. They would die over it. The manna that kept them alive yesterday would kill them today. The Bible said it's got germs in it, contaminated in the manna. They had to get new manna every day. And what is it? The people that live on the man of Luther, Wesley, and them back there, you're eating contaminated stuff that's killing you spiritually. It's killing you dead in your traditions. Yesterday, Luther's manna would not work for Methodist. Methodist manna would not work for Pentecost. Pentecostal manna will not work for today. See what I mean? Every day it comes, day by day, fresh, and so has it through the church ages. Luther's manna was the message of justification. Wesley's message was the manifestation of sanctification. Pentecostal was the restoration of gifts, but this is introducing the headstone, which is Christ. The last day, the bride. So what is introducing the headstone? The last day, the bride tree, which is contrary to all of it, and yet it's the same light for the matured. Paragraph 177. Then, then here the children immediately after them founders, what do they do? They didn't stay on the stalk. They pulled away from it and made themselves a little husk thing out here. Which you get away from the real source of life, you have no life. You take a husk off the thing and plant it out there in the ground, it'll lay down and rot. And so, and so are you trying to eat rotten manna from back in them days. The harvest is ripe. Jesus has a table spread where the saints of God are fed on ripened food of the day by the gospel light, and that vindicates and proves that he is here today. Amen. The saints eat the bread. I don't know about you, but I don't want any rotten manna. 
from a previous day. And I do not want to live in the glare of a previous age. And I don't even want personally myself to live in the glare of a previous experience. But I want a fresh experience as I walk in the light as he's in the light. As he continues to reveal himself to me, I want to stay in that light and not bank and settle down on something he did for me a year ago, 10 years ago. But I want to keep walking with him as he's in the light. I want to see him as he is. I want to be where the fresh manna is. I want to be, I want to come into that fully matured state as he brings me into that hot August sun. Amen. Brother Bram, he said, those that stayed back in Luther's day, they dwarfed. They refused to grow on as the sun. They stayed back in Luther's light and they dwarfed. They'd never come to full maturity. And God help us to come to this message and dwarf. To stay in part of it, but not go all the way. To stay in part of the ministry, amen, part of the word, but not fully accept the revealing of the full word. I say, God, help us not to come to this message and dwarf anywhere, but help me to come all the way into the full expression of Jesus Christ. And all that he has for me, I want. And all that he reveals to me, I want to walk in. And day by day, I want to keep my experience fresh in the light of Christ. Amen. God. Help us as we stand. Musicians, if you'll come. Brother Ben, if you'll make your way up. Amen. God is so good. We've listened to, oh, about an hour and a half or more of this service so far, and we haven't even got to the title. There's a man here that can turn on the light. That'll be in part three. Amen. So God bless you all. We love you all. Let's bow our heads and thank the Lord. Lord Jesus, we thank you. God, just as we are incapable of making the sun rise every day, we ourselves were incapable of making your word come manifest. But God, you who were faithful to your commandment that the sun would shine, you who hold the earth in its orbit, Lord, you are the one who makes it shine day by day. You bring it in its season. You bring it in its strength. You are faithful to do it, Lord. God, we're not able to produce or make anything happen. But God, we're here to receive it, Lord, as you do it. God, I pray that you allow that full rapture son to bring us each one to full maturity. Help us not, Lord, to trust in what was done before, but help us to walk in the light as you're in the light walking with you day by day as you reveal yourself to us. And you peel away, Lord, all of the confusion and all of the denominationalism from us, Lord. All of the wrong thinking and the human ideas, Lord. Let your light just fade it all away and bring the seed that's within us to full maturity, Lord, as we walk with you day by day. Walking in the light that you've given us in this hour through this ministry in the end time, Lord, you're the one who opened the seals. You are the seals. You're the one, you're the mighty angel that's come with an open book in your hand. Help us to walk in that light that you've given us. And Lord, as you, as you break away all traditionalism from us, bring us to that full maturity, Lord, in each one of ourselves. We love you, God. We thank you for what you've done. You've been faithful to do it. We couldn't produce it. You've done it. But now we want to lay in the presence of this Son as you bake all the greenness out of us, Lord. We're trusting in you. We're trusting in your method. We want to walk in it, Lord. Pray that you bless your children as we go from here. Help us to walk day by day, eating fresh manna that you've sent down to us in this day. Help us to enjoy the sun, Lord, that's cleansing us, purging us from all the greenness and immaturity in our lives. God, help us to lay there. We love you, Father, and we ask for your blessings in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Amen, brother Ben. We'll walk in the light. It's such a beautiful light. Oh, it comes where the dew drops of
because the truth is revealed. He's opened the seals now and for always. Oh, the sun is up. Praise God. We got a young girl who's determined to be baptized tonight. Amen. She said she wanted to for a long time. Brother Brock says he, he's talked to her many times and she never changes her opinion. And I talked to her and she wants to be baptized tonight because she wants to be filled with the Holy Ghost and she feels something pushing her. And she can't be denied. So the baptismal pool is empty. I'm going to start filling it up now. It takes a long time to fill it. She doesn't want to wait. We're going to baptize her tonight. Amen, but we're going to let you be, ba be dismissed as you want to be dismissed. If anybody wants to stay, you're welcome to stay. But it, it could take me, I mean, we don't need a lot of water, but we need to get a little bit of water in there. So it could take me 30 minutes or more to get it filled. I just want to say, God bless you. It's an exciting day. And the word pulls on the seed. Regardless, that message that, that drew us, drews every seed, of, draws every seed of God. And it's exciting to see. So we're going to let you sing a few songs. You can be dismissed because it might take me a little bit of, a little bit of time. But God bless you. The sun is up, now I can go free. The chains that were holding me, I can no longer. Heard a long trumpet sound, declaring my jubilee. All that I once had, again is restored to me, because the truth is revealed. Open the seas now and for always. Oh, the sun, oh, one more time. Oh, the sun is up now, I can go free. The chains that were holding me, I declaring my jubilee and all that I once had and is restored because the truth is revealed so open the sea now and for always oh the sun Well, God bless you. We didn't have time to fill it all the way up or warm it up. So Kate is freezing. We're going to baptize her quickly, but she's determined to be baptized tonight. I love her determination. She knows the word and she knows what she's doing. So we're going to pray together. We're going to baptize her in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and let her go right out to her dad. Kate, because you love the Lord Jesus Christ and you believe he's calling you and you want to obey his word and you want to be identified with him and you want the world to know that you receive the Lord. It's my pleasure to baptize you in his name. Go ahead and get on your knees. Kate, go ahead, all the way down. It's with pleasure I baptize you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. All right, God bless you. Oh, the steadfast love of the His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning, new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness, O Lord. Great is thy gather may we glorify your name knowing well that as our hearts begin to worship all will be blessed because we came all will be blessed because we oh one more time 
Because we'll be blessed because. 